playing this new VR game known as Half-Life Alex. The game comes from the Valve Corporation and is a long-awaited continuation of their 20-year franchise. Now, I've been attempting to wrap my head around why this game has intrigued so many people. And I think it comes down to ideas related to the conscious and subconscious. I like to think of the conscious as something that we know we're doing. For example, I'm going to ask you, the viewer, to check the time code of this video in 3, 2, 1. We consciously move our eyes to check the bottom of the screen. Now, I like to think of the subconscious as something that we have less control over. For example, did you see that? A bright color directed some attention to that side. We don't choose to look there at that second. A good VR experience recognizes these two factors and plays into them. On one side presenting game mechanics, quests, storylines to consciously follow, and on the other side presenting things such as atmosphere, lighting, scale, general aesthetic in a way that feeds into the subconscious part of our brain. The subconscious then reacts to what it perceives as reality. You are watching Disrupt. The traditional enemies of the Willigamin Walalua are the Wataya, a people exactly like themselves in language, dress, and custom. Every week or two, they arrange a formal battle at one of the traditional fighting grounds. In comparison with the catastrophic conflict of real battles, these appear more like a dangerous field sport than true war. Each battle lasts only a single day and always stops before nightfall. Within this remote tribe, we can see a model in which the dance of life and death is mirrored within the ritual of a war game. Virtual experiences can be viewed as an extension of this. Models of a situation that we interact with naturally. I mean interact with in a way that is the same as interacting with real world situations. For example, opening a door instead of pressing a button or moving a mouse. With this in mind, we must look at VR from an outsider's perspective. For example, a woman drives down a road every morning on her commute to work. This continues for a few years. One day, however, she notices a house on the side of the road that she's never noticed before. The house was always there. In fact, it was built in the 70s. The woman just naturally passed over it on her commute. Through this, the woman has expanded her awareness to include the house within her drive. Now, the house provides no additional value to her, it's just a house, but now she is consciously aware of it. The technology of VR can be viewed in a similar light. When we enter the metaverse, it becomes an extension of our awareness, information that is presented naturally to us. I think this is why it is particularly powerful within the case of Half-Life Alex, because Valve is filling our awareness with an experience that uses reality as its base. Through the skillful work of the team, the detail... Have you moved? Yep, they got the reactor. Easy peasy. I'm headed back to the safe house right now to meet Dad. In the future, one can see how this will get more and more realistic until we reach a peak VR point in which the experience is indistinguishable from reality. narrowed it down to a few things that I find important to effectively tricking the brain visually. Photogrammetry scanning, the act of transferring real-world objects to digital objects. Scaling, things don't feel too large or too small. And motion capture, and animation. Russell. lets the subconscious accept that the formulations of pixels is the same thing as ordering coffee from a barista because the movements are natural. This is not to say that a VR experience cannot bend the rules of reality. Some of the best games have funky art styles, but this does create a playground for the conscious mind to suspend disbelief because the subconscious mind perceives reality. The place that I believe these experiences will find within the next decade is similar to that of real-world sports or board games. These are activities that have enough structure balanced with enough chaos to create live models of complex social situations in a way that is easy to follow. What is presented is an activity that is accessible to many minds, specifically the modern mind that is used to a lens of specialized tasks or fragmented jobs throughout the day. 
for example, working the cash register or completing freelance jobs remotely, we enter a situation and we must play the game. Virtual experiences then find a similar place. Controlled situations or extensions that permit a separate experience from reality. Finally, we can begin to see what the future of VR experiences will be. A media of communication to translate the experience of consciousness to another individual. In, in other words, at its peak form, a VR experience is a downloadable media file in which the individual or team creates a virtual memory. I say a virtual memory because when I think of Half-Life Alex or the countless other VR experiences, I'm not thinking of a world through a screen. I am remembering my time within that place, even though I was in my living room.